Thank God it's Friday. I'm here with another edition of PM Personality Profile. My guest tonight, very enterprising, skillful and intelligent. He will encourage you with how he became a full professor at age 39. Stay with me. I'm coming right back. Welcome back to PM Personality Profile. My guest tonight, a leading voice in marketing on the continent of Africa with over 70 journals and over 200 publications to his credit. He is a professor of marketing and doctor in international business. Professor Robert Ebo Hinson. He is currently head of Department of Marketing and Entrepreneurship at the University of Ghana Business School. Prof, you have a CV that makes up a book it's amazing i want to it? be like you when i grow up god has been good, very good to me i mean it's, it's been it's been a good journey yes it's been a good journey. by the way how how have you been in the midst of COVID 19 with all schools closed academic activities almost grinding to a halt how has life been COVID 19 has been a blessing and a curse at the same time hmm. uh, it's been a curse because i just got a new job you didn't add that to my designations at the beginning. Okay. Uh, in December last year, I was made the acting director of institutional advancement at the University of Ghana. Oh, wow. And it's, it's a brand new office. Okay. And institutional advancement is what is the heartbeat of all good universities because you are in charge of marketing, branding, fundraising. You are supposed to ensure the student experience is good. So if institutional advancement works, the university will work. So Definitely. we are just starting a new campaign to do some fundraising and COVID hit. Now, I know when COVID-19 arrives, people don't give money too easily. Mm -hmm. But interestingly, tomorrow, Ken Thompson and the Delex finance team are bringing me 20,000 Ghana CDs. So let me thank them here before they bring the check tomorrow. So <laughs> I'm prof, I'm I want very, to be your friend. Yes, I'm a very happy person. Yes, so tomorrow we'll be <laughs> so receiving I can the check. My share. No problem at all. I'll just speak to the vice chancellor and tell him you came through. But, but COVID-19 has been a blessing and a curse. The students were not too happy with the online at the beginning. But now that they have a lot of convenience, they log in from home. They don't have to fight traffic to come to school in the evenings or during the day. They are even wondering why we don't continue with digital all through. Yeah. So I think going forward, the university might contemplate some blended learning approaches where you mix some digital with some brick and mortar mm -hmm. and then we can find it. But all side has been good. I mean, I, I, I've, I've been working out and sometimes I've logged in on my phone to teach students. So it, it's, it's been totally useful. I guess it's also a crucial inflection point. The world will not be the same again. So good organizations must think of the new normal in the light of COVID-19. So it has had its ups and downs. Mm. But all said, it's something we are living with, so we are making the best of it as an institution. I've been watching you from afar. You are such an amazing person. Yes, and I see you to be more popular, especially within the university community. Who is Ebo Hinson? Hmm. Trust me, I think I'm more popular outside. Inside, I'm not too popular, but <laughs> it, it, it's good you should say that. Well, I'm a professor of marketing. I joined the university at 29. By 39, I had moved from senior lecturer to associate professor to professor. Hmm. Today, I'm 47. And it's been a very, very good journey because I've met the best people. But before I joined the university, I worked for five years in what I think is Ghana's best advertising agency with the late Daniel Chum Jr. Mm. Amazing guy. Mm. And in that time, I worked on at least 50 brands before I came to the University of Ghana. Wow. So if you remember Steers in Usu, yes. I worked on Steers. I did Acer, Symantec, Canon, Microsoft, uh, APC. I did Space Phone with Fuachalabi. Mm. I did NTAC Limited. I did a bit of um, um, uh, Ash Foam. I remember the late Komla Dumont did an advert for us for Ash Foam and then he worked for us also on stairs where we used the certain popular Godfather uh, soundtrack to do some adverts. So I'm an advertising boy hmm. and I worked in advertising from 1990 to 2003. So my bosses were Joel Nete, who's now the head of DDB Nova, hmm. and then the late Daniel Chum, who died at 36 years and he helped really to form my marketing teeth. Hmm. So I joined the invest in 2003 and I've been here for 17 and a half years. Okay. It's been a really good journey. Oh. So you said you grew up in Osu. Osu, CDC, <laughs> Cafe de Coman. <Yeah. laughs> my my grandfather's a Coman. No, so there's a place called Osu CDC 
very close to Salem, near the Osu Reserve Presbyterian mm. Church. So my grandfather's a coalman. My mother was a coalman okay. before she became a Hinson. Okay. So I grew up in the coalman house. Mm -hmm. My uncle, Eric Coleman, was assembly man for the area before he died. Okay. I'm sure I've heard of the uh, Nijon Koma who stood against a senator. Yeah. He's like my distant cousin okay. because of my Koman background. background. So Koman is a very famous name in Osu. in Osu. I come from the Koman line. I see. Even though I'm Henson. Yes, mm. please. Yes, okay, please. but so uh, growing up in Osu, how was it like? Did you used to go to the sea? Oh, oh I, mean, what, what were you I used doing? to go to the stadium a lot. Okay. I'm a, I'm a die-hard Hass of Folk fan. Mm. Phobia, never say die. <laughs> so my <laughs> uncles taught me early time. how to go and sit in the stadium from 8 a.m. in the morning to watch a match at 3 in the afternoon. Mm. Oh, no. So me, I learned how to go to the stadium early. Okay. And I used to play soccer a lot mm. with my friends in the area. Uh, so I learned to mingle a, very early on with those who have, those who don't have. So I have a lot of friends from that Usu area. Mm. It, it was very beautiful growing up there. I had another good friend called Samodaki. He's a big doctor in Australia now. He lived not too far from me and we're in Achimota together in the same class. Mm. So Usu was good. That's why I grew up. Mm. Yes, very, very good. I'm sure you love it. Ah, too much. <laughs> two weeks ago, I ran from here to the Crossport Stadium nonstop. 13.3 kilometers. My goodness. When I got there, I went to visit my family people in Usu. My uncle is still there. My friend will say, can I you? Oh, you can, you can. <laughs> He's called Christian Coleman. <laughs> we have the same birthday, 6 February. But whilst I'm um, 47, he's like 72. When you see him, he's like he's 20 years old. And you, I you, love you him do to that bits. together? Oh, no, 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 I just want to visit. He said, huh, me no fear here. He said, oh, my mama's like, hey, no chufwe, no chufwe, come here, come here, come here, come Okay, okay. Growing up, I know at some point you had, you lost your dad. At some point you had to be a salesman. And uh, whilst I was promoting this show, I, I, I branded you as salesman to a marketing professor. Tell me about that story. I mean, how was growing up like? Okay. Thank you very much. I was born in Osu, very close to the Osu Cemetery. Oh. So I started school at Metin Nursery School, opposite Osu Cemetery. So you speak Ga? Oh, too well. I mean, oh, wow. Uh, but soon die in the uh, <laughs> Salem area. So, in the yeah. So, I started from Merton. Hmm. Then I went up the road to Richard School. Okay. Then I continued to Achimoto School. So, when I was come to Form 1 in Achimoto School, my father was working in the Gambia. Okay. So, my family was there, and I was the only, 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 the only person come to school here. So when I was going to school in 1985, Form 1 in Achimoto School, my father called me and said, Bob, I said, yes, daddy. He said, I don't know how long I'll live, but if there's anything I can do for you, anything I can sell, as for your education, I'll support you. This was when I was going to Form 1. Wow. Now, at common entrance level, the highest in Ghana at that time was 298, and I got 293. So I was five, five marks from being top, and I remember my friend Eboham was first, and from Richard School. And I remember when my dad was telling me he was well, he was strong, and everything was working. By the time I got six from my father had died. So oh. it's almost as if he could tell that this boy, maybe that Chimota, he won't finish with me around. Oh, no. He died at 50 years. And um, that advice about education, yep. being the springboard for every success in my life, mm. my sister, it has been a total. I'm always fighting with the people in the house because they keep saying, as a prophesying, read, 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 read. Look, me, I grew, everything I am today is because of what I read. Yeah. My father used to leave me at the Ghana Library Board in Central Accra. Mm. I'll read and read. The man will come and pick me later. I have to tell him in the car what I read on the way home. <laughs> so as for me, this thing about reading, it has been a lifesaver for me. Yeah. Because when he died, I had a mother and two younger sisters. Mm. Now, when the fanspin flag was being put around his coffin at the rich church, one of his friends told me that if your father could see you now, you have to stop crying. I was about 19 years then. Oh. And become a man because you have a mother and two younger sisters. When I came to Legon, it wasn't easy. I remember in level 300, the famous Oswald Mensah, he was working mm. at Joy FM then. Okay. He told me that a guy called Mr. Minka wanted a salesperson at trade fair, one of those trade fair things. So I went to cold temperatures and I started selling air conditioners, uh, freezers. So after trade fair, the man came to Farco Food Complex at Aladu Junction and I was a salesperson. Mm. So madam, I'll go for lectures here, then I'll run and go and sell AC. Then I'll come back for lectures. 
When I got to level 400, a lady called Nana Ham Nelson, Les Croft Consult, she also gave me part-time work. So I used to go for lectures, then I'll go and work at the night in Laboni, in the house. I'll be entering data. So hard work is something I learned very early, mm. that nothing is given to you on a silver platter. You have to work hard. You see, because hard work is the difference between early success and not doing well at all. Yes. So we made the sacrifices. I finished the first degree, came back to do an MPhil, and then I went to town, came back to join. Oh, and by the way, I taught for one semester at Ashesi University, just one semester. Okay. So the first set of Ashesi graduates, people like Patrick Quanson at Stambeck, uh, Kofi Oklu at Publicis, I taught them marketing. Oh, wow. Those guys are really excelling. Mm. So I did one semester at Ashesi on my way here. And so here I've, I came. Within two and a half years, I was head of department. A few years later, I was associate professor. Just before my 40th birthday, I became a full professor. Mm. I was head of department from 2000 to 2012. I was Hila Liman Hall Master. I was coordinator MSc International Business. I'm back as head of department, and I'm also acting director of institutional advancement. So God has been good. You see why I want to be like you when I grow no, up? You have to read a lot. <laughs> but I'm more interested <laughs> yes. in the uh, life at the Achimota School, yes. that's where you had your secondary education. Very much. How was secondary school like? Secondary school was very, very interesting. I, I was in house 18, and um, my, my seniors are people like Anthony Dompre, who works in the university, and I see him running here sometimes, I say hi. <laughs> and you say hi back. He used to beat me a lot, but now he's my good friend. He's a reverend minister now. So we, we are very, very cool. So Achimota was interesting. I did my O-level, and then I missed a year because my father became very sick, so I was in the Gambia with him. He went off to the UK. So when I came back to sixth form, those, my mates were now in upper six, and I, I, I came to lower six. Yeah. And he died, he, so he came to Ghana later and died before I finished um, my sixth form in Achimoto school. I always wanted to be a lawyer. Okay. And then just before my father died, he instructed my mom that I should go to the school of admin then. Okay. You, nice University of Ghana Business School, or school of admin. Okay. So I chose law. And I came to Legon with the law. Mm. And my mother marched me to a man called Professor Wood, who was the director then, and told him that I've been told to tell this boy to read admin. So I, I had to repent from the law and, and go and, and read go, admin. Okay. But it's not been a bad choice because I think I can read law at any time. Yes. So from Achimota, my plans were to... And interestingly, so um, the, the guy who was ahead of me, I was SRC president in Achimota school. And the guy who was ahead of me is called Kobe Daniel. Mm. He read law here. Okay. The famous lawyer, Kwame Kufu, Frax, yep. was also a year ahead of Kobe Daniel. Mm. So they were SRC presidents as well. So since they were lawyers, I thought I'd also follow them. But when I got here, I repented and I went to School of Admin. Okay. So as an SRC president in Achimoto School, I was very, very troublesome. In fact, one time, uh, an economics lecturer called me and said, you, Bob. You are there, as if you're always causing problems in the school. I say, oh, I represent the students. So whatever they want to fight for, I must fight for them as well. So I'm a little mischievous too. I, I know how to fight when I need to fight. Yeah. So I fought a little, came to Legon, did my BSc marketing option, continued to do an MPhil in marketing, started off without a PhD, got a PhD in marketing from Legon, Got a second PhD in international business from the Arborg University in Denmark. Mm. And this is how far I've come. Oh, so Achimota great. was good. We thank yes. God for your life. But yes, how please. did you, the demise of your father affect you yeah, then, in was, sec back then in Madame, secondary school? It was very school. tough. Hey, I remember I was just, a, I remember one evening my uncle came to the school and said, he wants to see me. I said, what? What is it? So oh, he wants to, he, he, we're going to the, Du Bois Center to watch Malcolm X yeah. together with some friends. Okay. My uncle insisted that no, he would take me somewhere and then I'll go and join my friends at Du Bois Center. Mm -hmm. So he took me to North Kaneshi to the late Mr. John Prempe's house. He was the MD of SSB at the point. He's my father's half brother. So when we got there, I saw plenty cars parked outside. When I went in, I was told my father has passed on. That's when I learned that in our culture, you greet from I think you greet from right to left. So you greet this way. When I, that was when I learned the first that you greet this way. Okay. So he died. I went to still watch the film and I told my friends, my father had just died. Oh, they were so sad for me. Then when he died, I decided that I had to be a man. So I cried a little and stopped crying because 
<laughs> when your father leaves you with the mother and two younger sisters, the crime is not. In fact, the crime is even not necessary because yeah. you have to set a good example for them. And so I remember when I came to Legon, there were times when I get my snit loan and I take some home to my mom, and I was trying hard to help. But uh, today, I thank God, my mom is still there. I ran from Legon to go and visit her this morning because you wanted old photos. <laughs> the woman is 73, 74. Her mother is 93, 94. They live together. So I keep telling them that, look, I want to be as old as you. Then my grandmother will say, Kashikbe, Oba Tekino, Oba Tekino, Grandma Tekino, Ma Tekino. Then she says to me, Hishiba, Hishiba. <laughs> so my grandmother always says that no matter how well I do, mm. humility will take me far. Humility. So the woman is very, uh, Hishiba, so it, Hishiba, oh, yeah, yeah. Grandma, Hishiba. Okay. And she'll take a God Bible, then she'll read and pray for me. Okay. So those two men are very strong in my life. They okay. keep praying. So, so originally, your mom is a gun. My mom is a gun. My father was fancy. Okay. My father made a mistake. <laughs> what he did was that he spoke English to me, <laughs> spoke fancy to my mom. <laughs> my mom spoke gun to us, <laughs> so my fancy I've sold it to the people in Kipus. Oh no! So all I know is Kawano Pado. That's all. <laughs> and when it comes to God, don't go there. Quick, in Kawano be onto the back. That's what the fancy. Kawano Pado. That's all I know. Now, when you know we catch a coin, we na saka do bonet be seen. No, no. It's still Kawano Pado. Kawano Pado. Don't talk Kawano Pado. That's all. Shut up. Kawa. That's all I know. Kawano Pado. But I know God very well. Oh my goodness, your father will forgive you. He didn't try. He kept on saying, when they are growing up, they learn. When they okay, so you see, you see, yes. Okay, so here's what he did. He went to infant school. I think if I had gone to infant school, I would have learned the fancy. Yeah. But at Chimotan school didn't help me. Yes. So the Gandhi, hey, the Gandhi, I'm very strong. <laughs> and my grandmother taught me how to read God Bible too. So Gandhi, hey. Oh, wow. But the guys have been good to me. Look, my grandmother was at Osu Ebenezer Presbyterian Church for years. Okay. When I was in Achimota, I got a scholarship from the Presbyterian Church. Oh, wow. Yes. I got a Cocoa Board scholarship, but I got a Presbyterian scholarship as, as well. well. Yeah, so the Presbyterians have been very, very good to me. Mm. I go to Victory Bible Church to, 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 to minister there every June, July. They have this business summit. Mm -hmm. So anytime I go, I tell them I'm paying back <laughs> what they did for me and what my grandmother is still doing for me. Yeah. So I like Victory Presby Church a lot. They mm. are in... I think uh, a dental or somewhere victory. Of, of presby. course, at 19, you, you became a father. After 100%, your father died, hundred percent. you became a father, a big brother Everything. to your siblings. Everything. Did that also affect your siblings? And again, I'm sure that ah, yes. that must have burdened you a lot. Oh, yes, yes, And yes, yes, uh, yes. in times like that, they say it makes you grow older than your age. Yes, please. Then you start counting the grays yes, even yes, when yes. you've not reached there. That's true. Did that happen to you? Well, I think my father's friends gave me some good admonition. They explained to me that the weight of the burden is not as important as how I react to the burden. So, madam, I took the decision early that I don't care what the burden is. So, I decided that as much as I can, my mother should not feel the weight of the loss of a husband so early on. Mm. So it was tough, but I think I adapted very well. I mean, like, this thing about working part-time, yeah, but if the, for those who went to school in the UK or in the US, you don't typically hear people are in school in Ghana and they are going at night to do data entry and coming back at 2 a.m. But I learned very early on that if I want to survive, I need to make sacrifices. Definitely. So I think we, 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 we managed quite well. Mm. Yeah, it wasn't and too bad. your siblings, um why are they now? They are doing very, very well. I mean, I have a younger sister called Isabella and the last one called Shalian. Uh, Isabella just finished an MBA in project management. She was at the Central University College for a long time in administrative roles. Mm -hmm. I think she's now doing her own business. My mm -hmm. sister worked in Golden Tulip, did at least. She's a hospitality person. Okay. So she also does a lot of hospitality consulting mm -hmm. and training. I'm the only one who decided to go to school plenty. In fact, people are still surprised <laughs> I became an academic. Because I was an industry boy through and through, working okay. advertising. You loved money, even at a younger age. I'm telling you. <laughs> but my father taught me something in life, which I'll share with those listening today. He said, anytime you are leaving a job, leave when the applause is loudest. Definitely. Don't leave the company when it is dying, it's collapsing. You are seen as a very evil person because you enjoyed when the blessing was there. And then when the problems came, you took your bags and you ran away. Yeah. So that should never be your portion. Mm. You must always leave when the applause is loudest. Okay. Yes. 
And I can share with you my personal brand vision is also to be the leading voice in marketing on the continent of Africa. Mm -hmm. Working advertising for Space Phone or Merchant Bank, it was good. You were being paid. But the capacity to affect people was very small because you're working for only two companies. But since I came here, oh, I have trained tens of thousands of people as students and also in executive training. Mm -hmm. I've, I've trained in almost every bank in this country. And I have people who have given me several good opportunities. So becoming an academy gave me a bigger stage. And I really appreciated that. Mm. Yes. Interesting, interesting, interesting. I mean, I'm loving your story. And I'm already inspired by hearing all of these that you've been through. But was there a point in time that you wanted to give up because you thought it was too tough? Mm. The burden was so much. Mm. So, um, when my father died initially, I was not too sure what kind of support I receive. I was also wondering about money issues because if you've lived your own life expecting money from somebody and they just leave, it can be a bit of a problem. So, it was, it was difficult at that time. But once the resolution was made, it was easy for me to find a good way forward. I need to say, however, that um, balancing work and school when I was combining was also very tough for mm. me at the time. Yeah. But, madam, I think that challenges just make you tougher. Yeah. And I also think that if you don't have certain types of challenges, you can't grow. So for me, my personal philosophy is that challenges make you better. And madam, if I have to share challenges, oh, madam, there are plenty of <laughs> hey, things I've tried that, I've failed that, jobs I've applied for that I didn't get. But you know the picture I sent you today when I was a kid? Mm -hmm. I know the way I was laughing. Yeah. Yeah, that's how I've been since I was born. Okay. It doesn't matter what you do to me. I just laugh and move on. But if you do it too much, I might also come back at you. So <laughs> just leave me alone so that there'll be peace everywhere we that's go. That's a yeah. good spirit. Yeah, no, so sometimes you have to also tell the people that please don't do it again. Mm -hmm. But generally, I'll laugh and move on because I think life is about solving challenges and moving on. Yes, okay. that's so what that's I think. So that's how you approach to your challenges Everything. growing up. Everything. Oh, wow. Everything. I'm going to take a break on PM personality profile. When I return, I'll be gauging Professor Henson's mood. There are a lot of young people out there who want to venture into business, but they don't know even how. Are there even resources for these young chaps to enter into these businesses they want to? We'll be gauging his mood on that. We'll also be finding out he likes reading a lot. You just heard him say that. Does he have a leisure time? What does he do with the leisure time? And of course, Professor Hinson has been working out lately. If those of you who know him, um, I mean before, can tell that he's lost a lot of weight. What's the secret behind that? All of that when we return from this break. Welcome back to PM Personality Profile. My guest tonight, Professor Robert Ebo Hinson. He's currently the Head of Marketing and Entrepreneurship Department of the University of Ghana Business School. He's also the Acting Director of the Institute of Advancement. And we've been having a wonderful time. You, you showed scholarship when you came to the university. You say you came in at 29. Mm -hmm. At some point, you became a teaching assistant. I'm sure because of um, the way you comported yourself. I'm sure a lot of guys were envious of you and many girls wanted to be your friend, correct? <laughs> they still want to. And the stewardship that led you to a full-blown lecturer. Tell me about it. Okay, so um, thank you very much for the question. After the, the, the first degree, I did my national service at the University of Ghana Business School. Oh, sorry, it was School of Administration at the time. Mm. 
and my job was to set up the first ever School of Administration Alumna Association. Mm. Remember the late Mr. Salia? He was a Minister of State, I think, under NDC or something, Edward Salia. So he came, he was, he was the first, I think, uh, chair. And then Mr. Frankie Du at Carbank at a point was the, uh, we set up a fund, a School of Administration Facilities Improvement Fund. Mm. So I remember working with Merchant Bank. So I was like a national service guy, set up the Alumni Association. Then I came to do my MPhil. Now when I was studying for the MPhil, I had the blessing of, I, I think I got nine A's and a B plus in the first year. I was very happy with myself. So out of the 10 subjects I read, I got nine A's and a B plus. Wow. And when I got to second year, that's when my money instincts came in and I went to start working <laughs> advertising. But after a while, I decided to come back and serve. Now I'd worked under people like Professor Boache, Dr. Kastner, who's at the Central University now. And so they taught me early on that reading is good and uh, you, I could be a scholar. So when I came back to start, it was easy to still sit under them. And I write a lot because I think that Africa for a long time has been shortchanged when it comes to business scholarship. Mm. We are still in schools that are teaching people with textbooks from America, from the UK. We, are, we still have Amazon.com, we have McDonald's, we have uh, 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 all sorts of foreign brands. Where are the stories about Casapreco? Where are the stories about the Christo Asafoman? Where are the stories about Alomo Beaters? Where are the stories about local brands that also need to feature in the way we teach business in Africa? So if you go to Amazon right now, I have 10 books on Amazon, and I'm going to write 100 before I die if God gives me strength, because I think we need to teach African students with African examples. Mm. Why are you still using examples from Los Angeles? When there's a papaya down here at Oxford Street, who's writing the papaya stories? Who's teaching the papaya? The papaya was around since I was like this. It is growing. It is becoming bigger. They are opening branches. Who is chronicling the papaya story? So I think as business academics, we need to do more mm. to write books that will be used also in Europe and America because the way we are hungry for what they have, they're also hungry for what we have. Yeah. So I do a lot of work across Africa. I've worked in Cape Town. I've worked in the University of the Free State in Bloom. I do work for Strathmore Business School. I've worked all across the continent. And the crusade I'm trying to lead is that we need to tell indigenous stories. We don't do that a lot. Mm. Look at this president who is doing very well. Who's writing his story? Nobody. Look at President Mama trying to come back. He wrote a story that is like a biography, autobiography type thing. But there are so many stories we can look at Kwesi Chum. Look at what he's done with multimedia. Who's writing Kwesi Chum's story? This brand is celebrating 25 years. It should be celebrated with a book that's being read in Washington, that's being read in Rio de Janeiro. So I think that as, as business scholars, we have a job to tell Africa's story. Mm. We shouldn't leave it to Al Jazeera and CNN and BB to write what they like. We need to tell our own stories. In that regard, I think that prime outlets like multimedia can also begin to sit with academics mm. and try to look at what can we craft together to tell the African story. Because when we say African Union, I'm proud. When we say ECOWAS, I'm proud. The question is, who is telling those stories? Mm. You've heard of the Africa Free Trade Continental, everybody is happy about it. I'm also happy, but I'm also a little uh, worried about how would the stories be told. Mm. So my inspiration for writing so much is that I think African students should be taught with African examples. And I think we really need to be strong in that regard. Mm. Because I don't have a problem with Philip Kotler. Everybody has read Kotler for the last 40 years. But why don't, why don't we create an African Kotler? Why mm. can't I be an African Kotler? I think <laughs> we need to sort of work towards these sort of things. So, a lot of my books are based on African examples and telling the African story. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's been good, uh, whichever way you look at it. One thing I also believe we should do a lot more is that industry should sit a lot more with academia in Africa. I think for too long, the ivory tower sits here and the town sits here. Mm -hmm. But town should be meeting down a lot, 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 lot more. Look okay. at this COVID-19 thing which has brought. Mm -hmm. Joy FM should have a lot of programs that are employing scholars from here to write all sorts of thought leadership webinars. It's also the way to go. 
So let's begin to just populate the global space mm. with a lot of African stories so that our story can be better told. Being at the university as a TA, I mean, you don't just become a TA. For you to become a teaching assistant, you must be a shark. And that's, that's what the girls like. Yes. When the girls giving you scholarship, were they bothering you then mm. at the university? That's what girls' issues and where I work. I think <laughs> if we, if, if we, if we leave the girls' issue alone, it's, it's, it's better for this interview because, uh, you know, we've had a few challenges with, um, with, 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 with some faculty yes. and, and issues around how they relate to ladies. Mm. Um, but I'm talking about you as a university boy, not okay. a lecturer even That's true. at that time. That's true. No, I mean, back then and now, you, you still receive certain types of... Um, approaches if you like. I remember one time I got an email from a lady who said she would do anything if I change her grades and I was wondering <laughs> this grades that you got because you didn't study what exactly are you talking about but I just I just uh, let it go but I, I think I think the the, the, the the critical issue is that yes I was dedicated male female I try to relate to everybody as best as I can and my students have been some of the best opportunities I've had in terms of doors they've opened for me, recommendations they made for me. Listen. So I try very hard to keep a good bond with my students before and after, after they leave. So ah, I, try, I try my best to be professional as much as I can with students and colleagues so that mm. we can find a good way forward. They say students are witches. Yes, please. Witches and wizards. Yes, please. And my friend would say winch. Yes, please. They won't study. They won't do anything. And then when you give them bad grades, they will hunt you. You see them in their dreams. That's true. I know. <laughs> Madam, this thing you are saying is a very I know you're sensitive very subject. Spiritual, hey, Madam. But <laughs> Madam. how do you deal with some of these things? I mean, have you had some encounters? Hmm. I remember some years ago, there was this guy from, let me not call the institution. <laughs> I kept on saying, study, 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 study. Then eventually he got referred, so he had to come and write the paper again. He was surprised. This was an executive MBA student who felt because he had paid some dollar equivalent, he had to pass by all means. Oh, he failed. He had to come and write the paper again. So when he came, I said, Chief, I thought we were discussing being more serious. It didn't quite work. Madam, please, oh, I think that I need to say something. I know internet. I know machine learning. I know AI. I know Facebook. I, I know technology, however, madam, the spirit of reading is disappearing in this country. Yeah. I don't know what it is. I don't know whether the textbooks are finishing or people are on their phones 59 hours a day. I but don't know what it is. But you have so many. We haven't even finished reading your books. But madam, why are they not reading? I don't know what it is. So, <laughs> so that's one thing. I beg. I want to use this forum to appeal to everybody on this country. I beg. Start reading again. Reading, reading. Reading is not something you can negotiate. You mm. have to read. Look, when I was in advertising, I'm going to tell you something that will blow your mind. I went to a place called Ghana Book Trust. They were around UPSC at the time. It was yeah. IPS at the time. Yeah. But I went to buy about 50, 60, 70 books. And I brought them to Adabraka because Originate was behind the Riley Secondary School in Adabraka. I bought my own bookshelf from Kingdom Bookstore and I put it in my office. So when you come to the agency at 10 a.m., madam, it's like the same at 10 p.m. You see the guys and the ladies reading books, just write a proposal to know how Kamoni and Silver Star, mm -hmm. or Sakib Nazir at Oman Fofo, or Rami Halimi at Oman Fofo, or Fwa Chalabi at Space Phone, or Dr. Bano at NTAC. Madam, they used to read, just write one proposal. Today, you can't tell him what to read to write a proposal. If you don't read, you can't write. Mm. I've said this over and over and over. And reading is useful for whatever life you are leading. Mm. So please don't read it to be good. Mm. Number two, there's something that's worrying me to see the platform. Let me say it. The spirit of apprenticeship is lost in this country. People who are 90 and a half want to buy a Range Rover. Which, which part of you can afford a Range Rover at 90 and a half? Mm. At 22, they want a five bedroom house that is being rented, not bought. Mm -hmm. So this wanting to live large, wanting to live big, mm. please so. Oh. Mm. The Bible says wealth, gathered little by little, it is good wealth. Mm -hmm. Little by little, riches, small, small is good riches. Mm. But this thing about gifty, come and work for me. 
Prince, how much will you pay me? Who should pay who? <laughs> See, you don't know anything. I want to help you. He said, who will pay who? Why don't you come and he put you on, on internship, Prof. Sciences of... No, 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 no. Everybody has become sicadicious. We want the money now. We want the money now. Maybe we are learning from you. Well, but I, I've read and I've done my apprenticeship. So it's time for me to chop. You, you haven't read. You haven't done apprenticeship. You want to chop. Which proper job in this world? Don't you do apprenticeship before you become a master? But back to that encounter. Uh -huh. which, which student was that that mm. didn't read and then now uh, hey, wanting to this scare student, you in your dreams? I can't, I can't call his name because... He was very unhappy that he failed. Mm. And a couple of students have also failed and they've come and they said, Prof, I don't like my grade. I said, no problem. I'll take the marking scheme. I'll show you a badly written manuscript. I'll show you the difference between what I want and what you wrote. And then I'll show you how you failed. Mm. It's, it's a very, very e easy discussion. But I think that sometimes too, what I'm going to say is very, very contentious. But since I'm on your famous platform, I'll say it. Mm. I think sometimes too, eh? Those of us on the supply side, lecturers, we also need to do more for the students in terms of teaching them contemporary stuff, yeah. teaching them modern stuff. Mm. Because you've heard people bashing us all the time to say that the products we give them, they don't like it. It's something we've been talking about all the time. Me, I don't like the debate. All I want to say is that if I know what multimedia wants, what Unilever wants, what Nestle wants, I'll put some of what you want into my curriculum so that when I train you, you go, you'll be a blessing to me. Yeah. Because alumni who do well, when you want money, they also give back to you. So mm. it's our job to ensure that we produce products that the market will accept so they will excel and give back to the university. Okay. Yes, please. So how did you deal with this? I mean, how do you deal with some of these encounters? I mean, people don't learn and they, yeah. they now come with all sort of stories. And they, sometimes some even come physically to attack you yeah. because you failed them. How do you deal with some of these? Okay. So generally speaking, I don't fail people because I have some colleagues who can fail maybe 60% of the class. I think if, I think if more than 30%, this is Prof. Sciences philosophy, it's not a general rule. If more than 30% of your class fails, you are part of the problem. Definitely. Because I don't see why you should train students for 13 weeks and more than 30% will fail. I agree. However, if I'm saying read this article, you don't read. Read this book chapter, you don't read. I've had a lot of fights with students. Students have reported me because proscience is difficult, it's worrying me, it's worrying me. So now I've stopped the fight. <laughs> I'll just ask you and ask you and ask you. If you write a bad essay, I will fail you. Mm -hmm. I used to fight because I think it is an abomination for a student to study under you and fail. I think it's a bad, it, it tells badly on you as the teacher. Absolutely. But the fights are becoming too many now, so now I've stopped. If you don't read, I'll just look at you. Uh, when. You write a bad essay at the end and I fail you. I'll just show you what I expected and what you did. So we try and manage the student expectations. But I'm sure I've heard of students who also won't come to school, go ahead in London for 10 weeks, come in week 12 and expect to enter the class. Yeah. There, there are some really, really interesting ones like that. They don't follow rules. They do what they like. Ask for me if you don't follow rules. I'll just take the handbook, show you where it went wrong. I'll write you a letter and then the matter will end. Mm. I won't talk a lot with you <laughs> before you record me and go and... Take me to Joy FM. But generally, how is your relationship with your students? I mean, oh, the in students, and out. The students is a, is a love-hate affair. When it comes to studying, it's very difficult. When it comes to uh, being happy, oh, the students, they really help me. They take me out. They hang out with me. They open doors for me, give me consultancy assignments, give me training assignments. I remember a student who knew a friend of mine one time opened the door for me and I was able to get so much return for that investment I was able to build a house from it. So students have been really, really good to me. Mm. Plus, plus, more than Professor Henson, students who are well looked after become good alumni and they give money back to the university. If you treat somebody well, you do what we call investments into an emotional bank account. Emotional bank accounts are more important than fiscal bank accounts because the more people endear themselves to you, the more likely it is they'll help you if you ask them for help. Mm. So if you manage students well, you build emotional bank accounts, you make more return in the future. Professor Ebo Henson is still my guest on PM Personality Profile. We've been having some insights into his profession. He's a lecturer as well. What 
uh, students have been doing to him and how he's also been responding. We've been talking about all of that. When we returned from this break, Professor Hinson, and I told you earlier, used to be Obolo. Now he's lost so much weight. We'll be finding out what his secret is and also pick his thoughts on the public university bill that is currently before Parliament. Stay there. I'm right back. <music> Welcome back to PM Personality Profile. Professor Robert Ebo is still my guest on PM Personality Profile. We are having fun over here. Prof, before I went on that break, we talked about how young people of these days are afraid to venture into business because one, uh, there are no resources and two, they don't even know where to start from. You hinted on how we should go about all of this, but I want to find out what role government needs to play in getting more younger people to become entrepreneurs? Oh, okay. That's, that's a very good question and it's also fascinating to the extent that you are asking this question when MPP is in power again mm. because I had first-hand contact with a Ministry for Private Sector Development maybe 17, 18 years ago when Honorable Kwamna Batas was Minister and we we're going around trying to get students to be more entrepreneurial so they don't finish school looking for a government job. Yeah. Interestingly, in this new MPP iteration as well, we have the famous Awa, mm. who, by the way, has an MBA in marketing from my department. He's one of our uh, alumnus, mm. and he's now the, the Minister for uh, Business Development. Definitely. And he's been having all these competitions across the country. They've come to the business school before. The president gave some money recently to some people to start. I, I like the whole, the whole sense of trying to promote the entrepreneurial spirit. What I would recommend though is, is, is improved is a better connection with the university ecosystems so that a world doesn't sit at the ministry alone trying to do everything because you can't do much as one person in a ministry. But I think the university themselves, like we had some years ago, must begin to introduce entrepreneurial management, small uh, business development, bookkeep. Think, you mean, if I graduate with a degree in political science, I don't have to become a parliamentarian. I must have some basic training that makes me able to set up something and be able to survive on my own. So I think government should connect more. I think there's a national entrepreneurship policy or something like that. Connect more and the National Accreditation Board says there are over 200 tertiary institutions in Ghana. Over mm. 200. Yeah. If 200 tertiary institutions are all running entrepreneurial programs, trying to get people prepared, I think together as a country, it will make a better impact. Mm. Also, I think they're running to money all the time as a constraint. It's not really a constraint. Mm. Anybody with a good idea might find funding. Mm. The problem with I can't find money, I can't find money is that there's nothing new about that idea you have. So who will put their money in it? Mm. The fact that I'm doing pure water doesn't mean you're also going to do pure water. But in Ghana, I find that there are a lot of me too companies. Because I've seen Madame Akosia doing pure water and she's bought it's a car, I must also go and do pure water. I think young entrepreneurs must take their time to better spot opportunities so that they can capitalize on them. Mm. My department is also called the Department of Marketing and Entrepreneurship. Yes. So I think we also have a role to play. And, and if you like, we can partner with multimedia. We can run free webinars, entrepreneurship webinars. I can get colleagues to facilitate it. And we can train thousands of students as our contribution to taking this agenda forward as well. And just maybe we can also discuss this issue of the university's bail. Because you keep asking government, government, government. If you follow the debate around the bail, what has the fight been? No, we don't like. There will be too much control over, over the university. Government will have too much control over the council. We don't like, we don't like, we don't like. It's okay. What I want to see are more innovative ideas. How we improve the entrepreneurial spirit of this country. Where is the international marketing dimensions of this university's bill? Because look, in the UK, they've passed an international education policy. 
where they want to have tens of billions of dollars from exporting education. Mm. Where are those ideas in these? I think we need to be more innovative rather than fighting over who have control over what. I mm. think while that is useful, that for me is, is not the main issue. Mm. How can we export university services abroad so we can also make money? It's part of being entrepreneurial as well. Yeah. Because in, in Australia, they make billions of dollars from exporting education and that's where Ghana should be going to. So for you, you don't have any problem with the public university bill? I think the public university bill can be more innovative than it is right now. The issue of control is an issue. And the universities and vice chancellors Ghana are, are right in the arguments they raise. I want the argument to go a lot further into for the universities bill, can there be an international education dimension? Can there be an international marketing direction? Can it be an entrepreneurship and innova innova innovation dimension? If all that can go into the bill, it would be good for it to go into some kind of university policy statement or, 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 or policy blueprint. Because universities that will make money are universities that are going to be entrepreneurial. So if we sit around and do things the same old way, we can't run as fast as we could as a country. Mm. Investments are crucial for national development. And before I let you go, um, we're entry, I mean, with four months into elections, the, the temple is heated already. 100%. What do you make of the current political terrain? So I think December 2020 will be a fantastic contest. Fantastic. Because I did an article two weeks ago in the conversation, you can Google it, where I was arguing that the Jenana dimension will matter because she is just not a token addition. You are here because you're a woman. No, no, no. She has sterling qualities. But the critical issue will be how these are translated into peeling brand. Because just being a university vice chancellor is not enough. We need to create traction between you as a brand and the electorate you want to vote for you. So if NDC can do that, then it will be a close contest. I heard an NDC deputy minister this morning on TV say that, who cares about Nana? We are not looking at Nana. We are not looking at Nana. The fight is between <laughs> Nanado and JM. <laughs> who is Nana? We, we don't, we, we are, I'm going to tell my friends, we are not looking at Nana. I said, yo, you'll be there and say, we are not looking at Nana. So he, <laughs> for him, he said the fight is between JM and Nana. They've all been in power before. So we are going to fight. I think, with all due respect, that is a problematic stance to take. Because politics is not only about the person standing in front. There's a party machinery, there's a running mate. So if you're an astute marketing planner, I think what you should be looking at is how to put all the elements together into a winning ticket. That's how you, you win the election. Mm. So it's not about one person or the other. Okay. It's about the composite offer. But, but of, of course, we've also been recording some pockets of violence lately, even with the registration. We've Very not much. entered the election proper. Very much. Are you worried? I think... Ghana is a very resilient country, and the violence should go down. I hear the Electoral Commission is also saying that for first-time voters, I think the women are more than the men, or generally speaking, women are registering more. I find that very, very interesting. I think battling COVID-19 is one thing, so we should be careful about that one. But I think that we should also make sure that violence doesn't characterize the voter registration now because it's a bad shadow for the elections in December. Mm -hmm. So we need to deal with it now so that in December it doesn't rear its ugly head anymore. Mm. Yes, please. All right. So, of course, we'll be getting to work out very soon with Professor Robert Ebo Hensen. He also loves music. And remember, I won't ask whether you love music because I know that every living being loves music. 100%. But by the way, one thing, you know, everybody has their down and up moments. Yes, please. What do you do when you're down? I never have down moments. Wow. I have a God I can pray to. Wow. Once I wake up at 4 a.m. and I can do brododo ma saka di bromomo la kika zi a bobo shindere bazunde. I'm fine. Because the thing is that look, whether you like it on a day, it's still coming. Hey, 5 a.m. will cause it. So better, you better, you better trust Brace God that Charlie the is happening. So let's go. <laughs> the, the issue is about whether or not. Look, so I know that this is not a Christian show, but. I have a few scriptures that really, really help me. If you look in Psalm 37, verse 5, it says, Commit your way also unto him, and he shall bring it to pass. That means that you must have a plan you commit to God. 
But there's an, an even cooler one in Lamentation Street 37 that says that, who is he that saith and it cometh to pass when the Lord commanded it not? So it means that whatever happens to you, God must approve it. Mm. The same Lamentation 3 says, you know the song, the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. It is in Lamentation 3, uh, 22, 23, 24. But the 24 says, the Lord is my portion, saith my soul, therefore I would hope in him. Wow. So it doesn't matter what comes. Oh, we hope in God. Mm, we will go. Whatever <laughs> we will go. The team must go anyway. So just trust God and go. It's like when you're going to sit on an aeroplane. Hey, the aeroplane will go. So whether you crash or you crash, just trust God and go. So it's a letter to you. Let's go. That's great all. one there. Yeah. You love gospel. Very you much. love old songs. Ronkinoli. And, and, and then you love secular as well. I do a bit of secular What's too. your favorite song? And just do a little of that ah. for me. There's an old one, Kinole. He goes, You are Lord, you are life, you are Lord over everything. Alpha, Omega, Jehovah. King of kings, wonderful way, maker worthy of my offering. Hallowed be thy name. It's, it's an old school song, but I really, really like it. And mm. I sing it every time I can. Your wife must be proud of you. I think so. I met her when I came in, and in your beautiful so. daughter. Yeah, Faith. She's what? a very special I mean, woman. I, I tell her she doesn't come first in school, she won't get any benefits. So <laughs> that, that's the deal we have. Once you're first, if you want anything, we can discuss it. So <laughs> if you're first, we can talk. Okay, viewers, let's get into the workout move. Professor Hansen wants to show us something small he's been doing. Check this out. <laughs> I think I killed her. Yeah. Oh, killed her. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so you need to help her. Oh, yes, please. Thank you so much for allowing us into your life. It's been wonderful. God bless you. Thank you to you. God bless you. Louis. God bless you. Same time next week, we'll be coming your way with another electrifying personality. My name is Aisha Ibrahim. Enjoy the rest of our show. <laughs>